Welcome to this Wonder Build tutorial. In this video, we're going to create a costing from an estimate. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure we've created our estimate. So let's go to estimations and let's create a new estimate. I'll just call this costing example. Okay, so we'll create our estimate. Now, once we're in the estimate, we obviously want to now create our costing. But actually, before we do that, I'm going to upload some plans just so I can show you how the takeoff feature works whilst we're in the costing. So let me just upload some plans into our estimate here. Okay, select these two plans. Okay, so we've got our plans uploaded into our estimate. Now let's go back to the costing here. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is add a costing. So we we'll click this button up here and I'll go through each of the box options here and I'll explain what each one does. So category name, this is the cost category for your costing. So Let's just call this one bricks for this example. Markup we can leave blank because what we'll do at the end is add a global markup, which I'll show you how to do once we get to that. We can also leave this zero account box blank because we're importing our invoices or bills, I should say, directly from zero. And we've already got a default expense account that's been allocated, so we don't need to assigned an individual account to this cost category. Okay, so you can see here we've got our line items. So what we want to do is now add individual line items under this category. So how you can go about that is by just typing in here whatever costing item you want to add in. So let's just say we'll call this one brick supply. We'll hit create. We can enter in a quantity, which is pretty straightforward. So let's put in here, let's just keep it simple, a thousand bricks. And now what you can do here is if you hit this calculator button, you can see it obviously brings up a standard calculator where you can work out your quantities per the normal method. And you can also see that you can add wastage and uh, rounding to whatever quantity you enter in. But you can also add in the takeoff. So this is why I imported plans this costing so that this feature can come up. So the idea is, is that if you do a takeoff, you can bring up those takeoff quantities into your costing within this line item here by just hitting this drop down button. And if I had done a takeoff, or, or multiple takeoffs, they'd all appear in this drop down list. So I haven't done any in this example, but what you can also do is hit this plus button and that'll then take you to this new takeoff screen. So you can do a takeoff directly from the line item in the costing. So you can see it picks up the name, uh, leave this category as default. We pick square meters for bricks and then hit create. And then that takes you to the takeoff area. And you could go in here and do your takeoff per the usual method, which there's another video for that if you wanna see how to do takeoffs in Wonder Build. But otherwise you could just do your takeoff and then hit save. And then that'll automatically bring up the quantities within that cost category line item. Let's hit cancel for now. And let's hit cancel again. Under unit of measure, we would put, in this instance, we've got quantity. So these are the standard default unit of measure items, but you could add in your own. So we could write here each, for example, and do create, or you could make this one, and maybe it was per thousand for brick supply. You could do something like that. With the cost, obviously you can just type that in. So let's just say our bricks are 950 per thousand. 
And what you can also do is if you hit this dollar icon here, this will take you to your pricing list. So you can then select a price item from whatever price list you've got saved within Wonderbuild and import that costing information direct. So if I click this drop down here, there should be one for bricks. There is. And then I can go to whatever category I've got within this price list. And you can see it brings up those line items, what I've got under that category. So if I was to hit select here, that would automatically change the description I previously had in here and it would bring up that cost item. So that's how we do that. And that's what this dollar icon allows you to do. But let's just, um, oh, we can leave that actually. I won't delete it. Then what we can also do is put in the cost type. So you've got these three default options here of labor, materials and labor, or just materials. Let's select materials for this example. And if I click this icon here, it allows you to toggle the different cost types being no cost type, just say a standard cost line item, prime cost, provisional sum, and there's also an A for allowance. So you can um, categorize each line item in terms of the specific allowance. And then what that will allow you to do is bring this particular line item into the quote proposal that you send the client, which I will go through in another video. And under the allowances section within that quote proposal, just by uh, selecting one of these allowance types, that'll come uh, into that section of the quote proposal. But for the moment, let's just toggle that to none. Markup, you can add markup to this specific line item. And what you can also do is decide how you want to distribute that markup. So you've got the option here of do not distribute markup, distribute the markup over the category and distribute markup over the entire estimate. So it gives you some flexibility there. If you've got multiple line items within this category, how you want to allocate the markup across either the line item category or the whole estimate in itself. Let's just toggle this back to, to not distribute markup. GST free toggle, that's pretty straightforward whether the cost line item includes or excludes GST. And then we've got our total and then you can see the client total as well, which takes into account this 10% markup that I've added in here. If I put that back to zero, it'll just be whatever the actual cost is. Now, the other way of getting in our costing line item information into this estimate under this cost category is to also type in to the name in area here, and that'll give us a few other options in terms of the information we can automatically bring in. So. Another one of those ways is by calling up assemblies that you've got within the system or recipes. So I know I've got a brick calculation assembly in my templates. So if I start typing here uh, bricks, you can see these blue highlighted items come up. You can see there it says assembly. So if I select this one here and I click on this icon here, which is now turned green, you can see that it gives me that assembly for standard bricks per square meter. So for every square meter of wall area, I know there's 50 bricks. So if I was to put in the cost for those bricks here, and let's just say those bricks were a dollar each and hit update, what, it would, what I would then do is put in the quantity here, how many square meters of wall we've got. And let's just say it was 10 square meters then that will automatically calculate the price based on the number of bricks that are needed. Uh, so for 10 square meters of wall, we need 500 bricks and that's costing us $500. And you can see that also updated here in this line item. So that's pretty handy if you want to call up your assemblies from each line item. Like I showed you earlier, you can also call up your price list items within this, this name field here 
and you can do that just by typing. So if I was to start typing category, you can see all the different brick categories that I've got within my price list fields come into this line item here as well. So yeah, that's just another way of doing it by typing in here rather than hitting this dollar icon here and then selecting from the price list. Another option we've got with the price list specifically is to use this price lookup function. So if I click this button here, it'll take me directly to the price list database again. And again, if I was just to select a brick item, let's just say in this instance, it was brick labor. I could select the, the, the category and then the associated line items I had within that price list category and I can add them direct to this, this cost category and, and, and the estimate from the, the database in this way as well. So just click add and then you can see that adds that line item and if I had a price actually linked to this price list line item as well, that would populate here as well. Some other options, we've got some costing item toggle options here. So if I toggle show notes on, it gives you a box here where you can add in your own notes for each line item, which is pretty handy. And then there's also some options here with regards to GST. If you want to enter costs as including GST, you can toggle that on. And the same with toggle GST free. If I hit this, it'll toggle them all on to be GST free. Okay, and once we're happy that we've added in all our cost line items under this cost category, we just hit add here. So, okay, let's just delete this one. Let's delete it. Let's hit add now. Okay, so that adds those line items to this brick cost category. And you can see our total cost there all tallied up. Now, we've got the option here where like I mentioned earlier, we can add a global markup. So this saves you having to add the markup either to the cost category or individually to each line item. So if I click here and I just put a set as an example and hit save, you'll see that that adds that 10% here and gives you that grand total to get, you know, your final budget or, or contract value price. So that's an easy way to do it. If you don't want to muck around with adding markup to each cost category, just add the global markup option here and that will apply it to the subtotal of your entire estimate or costing, I should say. Another handy feature is that you can also bring in estimate templates. So you can save your costing templates, I should say, and import those into your new costing when you're preparing an estimate. So we hit the options here and we go to import from template and then I'll select this one here. You've got a few other options here to decide whether you want to bring in all your categories you may want to leave some out and you can also uh, decide whether you want to set all the quantities to zero or the cost to zero and uh, add or keep the notes that you may have in this template. So if I do that and hit import now, that will bring in all the cost categories and the cost line items in general that I had underneath each cost category into this estimate costing. And that just saves you having to go in and create everything individually, like I've done in this example. You can then have these all saved as a template. And again, it just saves you from having to manually add everything in yourself each time. And it's also a good way just to trigger you to make sure you don't miss anything when you're pricing a job. And you can click through each one and make sure you made the correct allowances for the project. That concludes this Wonder Build tutorial. Stay tuned for the next video.